Okay guys, today I'm talking to Grant. He works here at Five Star Engines and he's all about balancing crankshafts. So we're gonna show you both how he adds and subtracts weight and how he goes through the process of balancing a crankshaft and give you guys a little uh, insight on how they do it. So as you're hooking this up, can you explain what that's about? What is this small? Yep, so this here, this is just telling the machine the RPMs the crank's spinning at. And these two here, this is what's going to be reading the vibrations of the crank, and that's going to tell the imbalance. Oh. Basically real similar to a, uh, a wheel balancer for a tire. Similar thing, except it's recording it on both ends of the crank. And that's where we get the two readings of where the imbalance is on the front of the crank and the rear of the crank. All right, so this here, this is where we input all our information, all the different weights. Okay. So when our piston guy, when he hangs the piston, he gives us a piston weight, and then we have um, the rotating end and the reciprocating end. Okay. So that's calculating different weights of the rod, the uh -huh. big end of the rod and the small end of the rod. Right, okay. So in this case, it's a, it looks like a Chevy 350 and it's uh, board 60 over? Yep. Okay. So here I've inputted all the different weights. So we've got our piston weight, the rings, the bearings. We put about four grams of oil weight. So that's putting in the calculation, the amount of oil from splash that's going to be on the crank while it's rotating inside the motor. Okay. That's really accounting for everything. Yeah. So now that I've got our bob weight number, now we have to set the actual weight on the bob weights. What's the torque spec? <laughs> <laughs> Just snug it up. <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> Look at me, are you serious? <laughs> Alrighty, so now we'll stick all the bob weights on the crank. Uh -huh. So it's going to be set on 60 degrees of rotation, so we'll put them um, uh, perpendicular to each other every 15 degrees. Okay. So once we had it zeroed out on the first one, we just need to rotate it 15 degrees. Okay. We can set our next one. All righty, now we're ready to spin it up. Very good. So we're spinning it up to speed where it gets to a speed that he, it likes for measuring? Yeah, usually it's around 500. Sometimes it'll ramp up a little bit. Uh-huh. And so this is where we learn our starting point of where it is now. Yeah. Okay. And one thing to consider is an imbalance at 500 RPMs. If you're running a motor at 4,000 RPMs, the imbalance is going to become a lot larger when it's spinning so much more. So it can deal with 500 because it's very precise, I guess? Yeah, yep. So that's why we get it down with this machine, running it around 500 RPMs. If you get it just down to a few grams, that's not gonna, it's gonna be enough where the motor's gonna be running smooth under uh, normal operating conditions. Right, okay. But if you had something, say, a, a 20 or 30 gram difference, while it's on the machine, you're definitely gonna feel that when you're yeah. in the car, a lot more vibration. So it's starting to read. There we go. And now you know your to-do list there, huh? Yep. And in this instance, we like to take weight out of the counterweight, but we can see here we need to take weight out at two degrees, which we put the crank on there. We're off the counterweight. So now we're going to have to add metal on this side so we can bring the difference in weight over to this side. So this machine only tells you where to drill weight from. Okay. We can't drill anything over here. So how do you add weight to a crank? 
So we'll weld, so we weld with a heavier metal, so we can weld into some of the existing holes on the crank. Okay. And that should bring the off balance, bring it onto the counterweight, and we can drill a little bit, or hopefully bring it all the way in just by welding. Now, how do you explain that a hole's drilled out that far too far and you're having to bring it back? So that's just from the factory. So it was drilled out from the factory. And now when we're using different pistons, oversized pistons, that there's going to be a difference in weight. Okay. Um, so the pistons we're using are going to be up there a lot heavier where we need to add weight because this the, the counterweight is counterbalancing the weight of the piston. So we're using a heavier piston than was originally used. So now we're having to add weight because... Because the counterweight was set. Yeah, it was set lighter. for a lighter piston before. Got it. Okay. Does that give you a kind of a live update on how you're doing? No, I wish it did. So we'll have to, all have to add weight and then re-spin it and then it'll right, yeah. tell me how it's much of a difference It's got to spin every time to give you anything, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I guess experience is valuable because you kind of start having kind of a feel for how much to add yeah exactly yeah the first few times running this machine it's pretty tedious of drilling weight and then seeing how much of a difference it made right they start to understand how much drilling out is going to make a difference or how much you need to weld in every part of the business experience makes a difference oh yeah okay just so you get the whole experience we're changing to a different project where we're removing material to balance rather than adding material here we go so when you've been drilling a hole, how do you know how much weight you've taken out of it? The computer will tell us here. Okay. When I spin it up, it'll tell me what point I'm, um, on the crank. So it's telling me on degrees. Okay. So on the rotation of the crank, see right on there, I'm getting basically right on 37, 38.5. Uh -huh. I have to remove 155 grams. We just took one hole here. Sometimes the weight will move around. So now I'm going to re-spin it. Okay. We'll see how much of a difference that makes. You can see here, normally it's right around 500 RPMs. Okay, so it's in the process of measuring right now. Yep, so there it goes. Now those weights came down from 155 to 82, so we're getting a little bit closer. Uh huh. And on the back is only about 20 grams left, so it's looking pretty good there. Okay, so then you rotate to find your next spot, basically. Yep. We'll find our next hole where to drill. Uh huh. So how do you find that hole? You rotate back and forth to get the maximum reading. Is that how it works? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so right here. Need to remove weight right on there. Uh huh. So we're right on that point on the crank. So then I'll anywhere right around there will work. Okay. So are you taking all the weight out of the whole crank out of that one counterweight? Yep. Not? Yeah. So usually. Well, I'm drilling bigger holes to take out of this counterweight. You can drill out of any of the counterweights. Okay. But the farther you get out from the center, the more of a difference it's going to make. Oh, okay. Same thing on the farther you get from the center um, vertically. So if you're working on a flywheel, taking weight on the outside of a flywheel is going to make a huge difference. Uh-huh. Centrifugal force. Yep. Okay. So is that partly taking out weight, but partly a pilot hole? Yeah. Yeah, so first we'll drill a pilot hole. 
And some cranks, if you're working on a forge crank, this is a scat aftermarket crank here. Uh -huh. It's a lot harder metal than a cast stock crank, so drilling a pilot hole is really necessary to be able to drill through it. Right, okay, that makes sense. It's all about the material you're working on, isn't it? Yep. You got a number you're aiming for on this depth gauge? Yeah. Basically? Yeah. Okay, so can you explain you went from a small to a big and now you're back to a smaller bit? Yeah, back to a small because now I'm going to move to the back of the crank. Okay. Because we have to remove another 20 grams on the on rear. On the back, right, right. That's a quiet part of the operation right there. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. So you said this was a SCAT crank, and SCAT is an aftermarket manufacturer, is that yep. right? Yeah, so this is a 383 crank, so going into a Chevy 350 using a longer stroke. Mm -hmm. And we'll still use a 5.7 inch rod. Okay. And that, the only difference is a piston, the wrist pin is gonna be moved up in the piston. Okay. So using a 383 piston, we can use a stock rod, but then stroker crank. Got it. Okay, and then you get your 350 cubic inches to 383. Yep. All right. It looks like you're okay. getting close. You're getting real close now. So these are bob weights. They represent the weight of the piston and rods. Oh, so okay. Before we balance this, we have to balance the entire assembly. So that's a crucial part. Uh -huh. Making sure all the rods are the same weight, all the pistons are the same weight. And um, we input all that into the computer the weight of the bearings, weight of the rings, and then it gives us this bob weight weight. Got it. So when someone sees how it takes time to go through this, it might help them imagine why it costs money to balance a, a crankshaft, right? Yeah, yep. And sometimes on a, uh, a high performance steel, because uh -huh. you can either have a crankshaft can be internally balanced or externally balanced. So here, this is an externally balanced crank, Okay. because you can see it's got this weight on the flex plate here and the balancer has weight cut out here. So there's, it needs the balancer and flex plate or a flywheel in order to balance the assembly. Okay. If you wanted to intern, internally balance this crank, you'd have to put in heavy metal slugs into the counterweight here. Okay. So that would be a matter of drilling, drilling out the counterweight and putting in heavier metal. And that would take a lot more time, but then you have an internally balanced crankshaft, which is gonna be a bit smoother because keeping everything a lot more together rather than more outside, the outside. rotation. Okay. This is the weight you're referring to, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay.
Let's, let's get an update, see how close we're getting, right? Yep. Pick this counterweight because it's too close to the edge of this one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Got a big enough hole here, so I just got to move over. Yeah. All right, drum roll, please. Let's see how close we are. Hopefully this is it. Who's the winner of the Balance is Right show? Now, what's the spec on how close it has to be? If you're around five grams, that's mm -hmm. plenty fine for anything mild performance. Okay. Um, if you're in some high performance or race mode, you probably maybe want to be less than two grams. Okay. But really, you're probably never going to notice a difference of just a few grams. Yeah, okay. Measure the higher RPM this time. Yep, yeah, sometimes it'll ramp up once it gets closer to zero, so. Okay, there, there we go. Good to go. Three grams is good. Grant, thank you so much for explaining that. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it.